Buenas tardes y bienvenidos. I'm Dr. Patrick Velasquez, the co-chair of the San Diego Chicano Latino Concilio on Higher Education. This is the San Diego Concilio Commentary. Last month in February, I read a headline in the local San Diego newspaper entitled Cal State Chancellor Castro Resigns. The story described how California State University Chancellor Joseph Castro was forced to resign his lofty position because of allegations that he essentially covered up for a sexual harasser when Castro was the president of Fresno State University. Castro admitted making some mistakes, such as writing a positive letter of recommendation for the predator while separating him with a $260,000 buyout to secure the guy's resignation. Apparently, while Castro was under consideration for the job, of CSU Chancellor, he failed to disclose these important matters with the CSU Board of Trustees. Well, it turns out that I met Joseph Castro many years ago when I was a manager in student affairs at UC San Diego. At the time, UCSD was going through its regularly scheduled accreditation review. According to the Google definition, accreditation is a review process to determine if educational programs meet defined standards of quality. The University of California, like most similar universities in California, is accredited by the Western Association of Schools and Colleges, or WASC. Few people may realize it, and it seldom happens, but if a university loses its accreditation, the diplomas earned by its students will be relatively worthless. Part of UCSD's accreditation process at that time was to hold open forums between members of the WASC accreditation review team and members of the UCSD community. There were forums for faculty, staff, and students respectively. As I recall, Joseph Castro was the chair of UCSD's accreditation review team. I attended their forum for UCSD staff at which I testified to the racist, toxic conditions for Chicanos on the UCSD campus. Among the dimensions of such institutional racism was UCSD's complete refusal to appoint Chicanos to high administrative positions. As part of the UCSD Chicano Latino Concilio at that time, I testified at the accreditation forum about this institutional racism on campus, which also resulted in low numbers of Chicano students admitted to UCSD and low numbers of Chicano faculty on the campus. This testimony didn't exactly make me popular among the UCSD administration, but it had to be done. As I was testifying, I noticed that Joseph Castro looked like he was half asleep. It was as if he was trying to show me that he didn't care at all about anti-Mexican racism at UCSD. After I testified, instead of asking me some probing questions that could have shed more light on institutional racism on the campus, Castro just nodded and moved along. When the accreditation review was complete and Castro's committee submitted a written report on their findings, there was no mention about the lack of diversity and equity at UCSD. This guy had been in a position to create transformative, positive change at UCSD that would have benefited Chicanos and other underrepresented communities. Instead, he left a racist status quo intact. So now, as socially conscious Chicanos, how do we react to Castro's forced, justified resignation? Well, on one hand, his timidity meant that he would never take a professional risk to advocate strongly for Chicanos. So in that sense, he won't really be missed. However, I can't help but think that Castro's demonstrated incompetence and dishonesty will make it even harder for Chicanos to advance through the incredibly racist structure of higher education in California. As of today, UC San Diego, established in 1960, has appointed one Latino to a vice chancellor position in its entire 60 year history. And unfortunately, he was as much a vendido or sellout as Castro. If Castro's forced resignation was not bad enough, after accepting his resignation, the CSU administration gave Castro a $400,000 annual salary 
through 2022. After that, he has the option to take a high paying faculty position somewhere in the CSUs. It will be interesting to see who is appointed as the next CSU chancellor. Don't hold your breath waiting to see a righteous Chicano in the position. This has been a San Diego Concilio commentary.